Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back. Uh, for all you regulars out there that watch my, we obviously watch my videos each time I upload them. Yes, I am still suffering with the man flu. That's why I'm a bit quiet. So I'm going to try and do as much of the uh, the camera work and my talking as I can with you close to me in a minute. But today we've got for review the Intel i7-970. Now. Uh, just go over a few bits about it because really the only difference with the uh, 970 and the 980 is the uh, 970 has a locked multiplier at 25 whereas the 980 it's completely unlocked and you can go on you know I mean, as high as you want to go. Um, pretty much the 980 is what you would call like the heavy overclocker chip so that you can really, really, you know, use that multiplier and push your overclocks up as high as you possibly can do. Now uh, I got the 970 and obviously there was a few early reviews that have come out and they weren't really shouting very loudly about it. But uh, I will say very early in this review you need to watch all of it because this is an absolute stonker of a processor. That's uh, absolutely amazing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera in now and show you some stuff on the screen some previous benches. Uh, I've got Prime 95 running at the moment so you can see some temperatures as well uh, but I'll talk you through it more when I've got the camera a bit closer and it'll be a bit easier for you to hear me as well. Right then guys if you want to see the this in a bigger resolution then don't forget you can always click the I think it's down it's going to be in this corner somewhere I can't remember but you can click high definition and also make the screen a lot bigger so you'll be able to see it a lot easier but essentially what we've got here is Prime 95 running this is my CPU Z and you can see that uh, basically just for this test to show you uh, it's a 4 gigahertz overclock which is like a milestone for most people which is a 200 base clock uh, with a 20 multiplier the RAM's all in, uh, running at exactly, uh, you know, linked in on a times 10 multiplier as well. But essentially, uh, I've got the uh, load line calibration on the uh, RAM page. Uh, it's set at 2.25 in the BIOS, uh, and then it's going up to 2.3, 2.37 with the load line calibration. Um, but this is completely stable with just that low volt of 2 2.3, 2.25, 2.8. It's gone up to 2.44 there. Plus the load line calibration fluctuating. Um, now with this low volt, it's completely stable. Uh, this is if I do if I show you the task manager. Task manager is absolutely maxed out at 100 percent, and it's completely stable. And if you look down here, I'll move it up for you. If you look at a hardware monitor, the hottest core is running at 65 degrees. Now, basically, I've, uh, I'm using an NHD 14 and it is on 12 volts. Um, but the fan noise, if you can hear any fan noise, is actually the graphics card making more of the noise than the uh, Noctua. Um, There you go, that's where the fan stopped. It's still really more the uh, graphics card than anything else. But anyway, so you can see that. Now what I'm going to do, just to show you quickly, is I'll uh, exit Prime. I'm just going to go into uh, W Prime. Now anyone that's used this in the past will understand, but this is literally just to show you I'm going to set the thread count to 12 because obviously it's got hyper threading, so that's two lots of six. And then I'm just going to run you a quick 32 uh, million run. And it is very quick because that's it over and done with. Uh, 4.976 seconds to calculate um, 32 places there, 32 million places there. Now you're all going to want to know about overclocking and obviously you can see that I can get a 4 gigahertz overclock at uh, 1.25 volts basically because you can see it's flicking around there but that's just the load line calibration messing about as I keep saying. But if I go in, this is where I, uh, I've been storing all my screen grabs. 
basically here, and this is a, a screenshot of a validated um, upload that I did earlier. You can see up here it was submitted by me, Tiny Tom Logan, Tuesday the 10th of August. And uh, my frequency was 4.8 gigahertz. It's 4,811.41 gigahertz. Um, that was done on my Rampage Extreme with Corsair uh, Dominator GT RAM and basically that was a 200 base clock with a 24 multiplier um, and it was actually set at 1.425 volts and the extra little bit there because the CPU said red 1.435 was the load line calibration I, that I was running uh, we did do I did take several other um, uh, screenshots as I was working up to it essentially uh, you can see now that this is a very very capable processor in the right hands um, so yeah I'm going to uh, stick you back on the other side now and uh, give you my final thoughts on the processor right then guys just to wrap this up you can see there what I've been able to be capable of with the processor overclocking wise and you can see how fast it is uh, if you want to read the full review with all the benches and game results and everything like that excuse me then you can go to overclock 3d as ever um, i've got a lot more coming for you forum wise so please make sure you check in there now uh, my thoughts on the 970 now considering that the only real difference between this and the 980 is the unlock multiplier I'd have to say that it doesn't really, it hasn't made a blind bit of difference with this. Uh, the 980X that I've got is an engineering sample, so it's one of the early batches that they sent out. And I did hear that some of the retail batches that came later were more capable. But compared to my 980, as a direct comparison between my ES and this, because the 970 that I've got is a retail sample from Intel, um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the, the 980 needs 1.35 volts to do a 4 GHz overclock stable. This is doing it at less than 2.5, 1.25, so it's over a whole volt less to do the same clock, and it's essentially the same processor. Um, overclock wise, I've also found that the, uh, the 970 is light staying at the high. Uh, base clocks throughout the multiplier range, whereas the the 980 I found really you had to drop the base clocks to be able to to be able to keep it high throughout the uh, the multiplier range. So essentially, for what I would call day-to-day -day use, where you're going to want a high base clock if you're overclocking, then the night this processor essentially is um, is much better. Now you have to understand that obviously processors, even if they're exactly the same processor, throughout the range they can be different. If you're overclocking at home, you may need a little bit more volts. That can be your CPU, that can be your board. So really just use mine as a good guide. Um, I do feel that, luck of the draw, I have got a good processor this time. But it really shows you what is available. Um, it could be to do with the batch numbers and things like that, but at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? It, it is going to be luck of the draw. You're never going to know 100% whether you're going to have a storming clock like this. But at the end of the day, uh, when you take it down, you've got the 980X, which is blatantly going to be for people that have just got to buy the best, the most expensive thing, or the people that are going to be uh, overclocking and uh, benching. But for the, uh, for the, I suppose, the enthusiast or stroke normal user that just wants a 6-core processor, the uh, 970 is an absolute blinder. And if you're going to be overclocking, I mean, I've done everything on mine on air and I've not seen 80 degrees even when I was doing the 4.8 gigahertz overclocks. So, uh, you rich, you know what I mean? It is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it, it's probably blown me away with the other websites. Do you know what I mean? They've uh, a lot of them have been saying it's not stable with this, it's not stable with that, and we couldn't get it without loads of faults. Um, I would like to think that they just got bad CPUs, but do you know what I mean? You're never really going to know. Uh, so 
we'll just have to see really, won't we? Sometimes uh, if you've got a good pro you know, I mean, a decent processor and it's in the right hands, if you're going to be able to do a lot more with it. At the end of the day, you know what I mean, with a Rampage 3 Extreme and a Nocturne and HD 14 and some decent Corsair RAM, it's going to be a blinder no matter what it get it to. Um, so yeah, if you were looking to buy a hex core processor, I would actually say that you're probably better off spending money on the 970 because if you get a one that's like mine, you're going to be unbelievably happy. I mean, as I said, with a 4 gig overclock and that uh, 1.225 volt in the BIOS, um, the maximum temperature I saw, even when I forgot and left Prime running earlier on, it was on for like an hour and a half at 100%, didn't go above 66 degrees. So, and it's, you know, I mean, it gets fairly warm in this room, so yeah, it's an absolute blinding chip. Now, I'm going to uh, go and feel sorry for myself. I'm going to wrap this up now and uh, maybe get on with something else while I can still stay awake. But uh, Tiny Tom Logan's views on the i7-970 is it's absolutely amazing. It's probably the best CPU I've ever had my luck to get my hands on. So, yeah, absolutely excellent. So, I find my remote. And uh, yeah, it's been nice to talk to you again, peeps. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment. And I do apologise for all those new people that found this video for the first time and I've been ill. Well, I'm not normally like that. So if you want to go and have a look at the other videos on my channel, please do. Right, so for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with a dose of the man flu out. <laughs>